This is a short lesson on the Latin ablative absolute. We'll start with English. In English, or in grammar generally, an absolute refers to a clause or a phrase that is absolute. That means it is grammatically cut off from the rest of the sentence. It has no bearing grammatically on any other part of the sentence. It works by itself, nothing else interferes with it, and it interferes with nothing else. So for example, weather permitting, the game will still happen. You can also switch that around to say, the game will still happen, weather permitting. The absolute is weather permitting. It's the noun weather, the participle permitting. And it's just working by itself. It's just kind of hanging out on its own. It has nothing to do with the rest of the sentence. If we took this out, the rest of the sentence, the game will still happen, works just fine on its own. It doesn't need the weather permitting. This is sort of a disguised conditional. If the weather permits, the game will still happen. But we don't phrase it that way. It is a disguised conditional, but this is also an absolute. The war finished people began to rebuild what they lost. The absolute here is the war finished. We could also say with the war finished, with the war having been finished. We could translate it temporally, after the war was finished. Since the war was finished, that was the cause, the causal clause, that people could then begin to rebuild what they had lost because the war had been finished, since the war had been finished. This is fine as it is. People began to rebuild what they lost as a fine sentence on its own without the absolute. The absolute doesn't have any bearing on this part of the sentence, the main part, and the main part of the sentence has no bearing on the absolute. They work independently of each other. So Latin, it's the same thing. Only in Latin, the absolute is in the ablative case. That's it. It's just going to be in the ablative case and it's going to be working by itself. The bicycle training wheels translation that you should start with is with the noun participle. And I know not each one of these examples uses a participle, so I'll teach you how to work with that. So we'll start with with the noun participle. Once you get better and more comfortable with these, then you can take off the training wheels and then you can fly. Bello confecto, caesa romam redit. So the ablative absolute is right here, bello confecto. It consists of a noun in the ablative case and a participle, a perfect passive participle. Check out the participle video. In the ablative case, agreeing with it. They agree with each other. They do not agree with anything else in the rest of the sentence. The rest of the sentence has no bearing upon the absolute. If we took the absolute out, Caesa Romam read it is a fine sentence, makes sense all on its own. It doesn't need the absolute. So with the war, with the noun, then just translate the participle, having been finished, having been completed. With the war having been completed, Caesar returned to Rome. Now that's your basic, easy training wheels translation. That's the one you should start with. When you get better, when you get more comfortable with these, you can then expand out these ablative absolutes and you can translate them temporally. When the war was finished, Caesar returned to Rome. After the war was finished, Caesar returned to Rome. Or you could say when or after the war had been finished to really emphasize that this action happened before this action. Because notice it's a perfect passive participle. And perfect participles happen prior to the main verb beforehand. So first the war was finished and then Caesar returned to Rome. You could translate this causally, causal clause, uh, because or since. Because the war was finished, Caesar returned to Rome. Since the war had been finished, Caesar returned to Rome. As the war had been finished, Caesar returned to Rome. You could translate these uh, concessively, meaning although, although that doesn't always work. Although the war had been finished, Caesar returned to Rome. That doesn't really make much sense. We're not going to go with that. 
And very, very rarely you can translate an ablative absolute as a conditional. If the war had been finished, Caesar returned to Rome, but that's pretty rare. Now you're probably wondering, how am I getting all of these translations from just these two words? Well, first start with the easy translation, like I said, with the noun participle, with the war having been finished, Caesar returned to Rome. Then, like I said, as you get more comfortable, as you see more examples, as you get better with these, you're going to find that there's a wide variety of ways to translate them. And your translation will rely upon that magical thing called context. So as you get more experience, you'll be able to pick up on what the context is trying to tell you. So until you get good, make sure you start with this easy translation with the noun participle. Now, having said that, let me take away the participle. The second kind of ablative absolute, the first kind being the most common, noun plus participle, or a pronoun and participle. And the participle doesn't have to be perfect. It can be present tense as well. Uh, rarely will it be future, but it's most often perfect and sometimes present active. Anyway, the second kind of ablative absolute is a noun. An implied participle, which we translate as being, and then another noun. So instead of a participle here, noun. Noun plus noun. With Caesar being a leader, noun plus noun, with an implied being, the 10th legion was fighting bravely. We can also say, under the leadership of Caesar, a little bit more elegant than the first translation, the 10th legion was fighting bravely. While Caesar was a leader, the 10th legion was fighting bravely. Because Caesar was the leader, the 10th legion was fighting bravely. Once again, stick with the easy translation, with the noun, and here make this a noun, with the noun being a noun, with Caesar being a leader. Start with the easy thing, then move on to more complex and elegant translations as you get more experience. The last kind of ablative absolute, number three, is the rarest kind. It's a noun and then an adjective with an implied being like the second example. So with the danger being the greatest. Don't ever translate this as with greatest danger. Not what that says with the danger being the greatest, even though the danger was the greatest. Although the danger was the greatest, the soldiers were fighting. This is a good example of how it could be translated concessively with the conjunction although. Although the danger was very great or the greatest, the soldiers were fighting. Even though this was happening, this was happening. So once again, start with the easy translation with the noun participle for kind number one, for kind number two with the noun being a noun, and for kind number three with a noun being an adjective. So for two and three, you'll have to add a participle being, which Latin does not have.